give me a call. I want to be here to help you. You can reach out to me almost any time, <laughs> and I will try to light your path. Everybody got a card? Does everybody have the lesson for today? Yeah. Today's lesson is number three, and it's all about sources of business. Who does not have a lesson? Raise your hand. Okay. Who could assist me in the class today? Can you do this for me? Can you uh, get these handed out so that everybody has a lesson so I can go ahead and get started? Now, before you arrive, I brought to you something very
And he said, well, Ken, have you ever thought about a career in real estate? I'm like, honestly, Leslie, how much do you really make? <laughs> I, had, I had this attitude. Yeah, I'm making 125K, really. What, what do realtors make in the Antel Antelope Valley? And she was making three times what I was making in 2010 during a very off time very rough time in the real estate business. So anyway, one of the things we're talking about today are sources of business. 
So this lady was the lady in my church. Let me tell you a little bit about Karen. Karen, very nice person, suffered a lot in her life. When she was young, her, both of her parents died in a tragic plane crash. So that's very sad. But what's even sadder than that is her 10-year-old son died of a heart aneurysm wow. in her arms after a t-ball game. Wow. So that's really tragic. And, and I knew this. And a year before this photograph was taken, her husband died of colon cancer. And she attended my church, and she was always such an upbeat and positive person. And she was my guest at my home for dinner one night. And she said, Ken, I heard you're getting your real estate license. I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm probably going to get my license in a couple of weeks. I already passed the test. And she looked at me, and she says, I'm going to be your first client. I said, really? And what happened is she inherited some money, or she got some money from the insurance settlement when her, when her husband died. She'd been saving it, the market was down, prices were good, interest rates were low, and she asked me to help her find a house. We searched and searched, and I was so excited, my first client, and so I'm showing her, and there were so many deals back then. I mean, there were 60% of our transactions were short sales or foreclosures, right? So you could buy this big house uh, and for, for next to nothing, and I'm showing her these huge houses because that's what I would buy. There's two lessons in this story, by the way. That's what I would buy. I'd buy this big house. I'd put a little bit of money into it and save until the market went back up and sell it and make a killing. No, she didn't want that. And I showed her another one. It's a fixer-upper, but man, the equity in this house, it's amazing. No, she didn't want that one either. And I showed her really nice houses. And I showed her fixer-uppers. We went through like a dozen houses. And then she quietly said to me, and maybe she said it two or three times, but in my excitement, I'm going at it like what I want. Your first client. First client. I, I don't think I was listening to her. But one time I heard her after looking at a dozen houses. She said, what about a condo? <laughs> like, Karen, why would you want a condo? They go up in value slower than anything else. You're living around a bunch of other people. And you know, you, you've got noisy neighbors, and there's kids playing in the pool, and blah, 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 blah. You know what she said to me? I wouldn't be alone. Wow. Wow. And that was the other lesson. First of all, business can come from anywhere. If somebody is room temperature or above, they are a potential client. That's all it takes. They may pump your gas. They may be the checkout. It doesn't matter. They're a potential client. Second thing is, listen to your clients. Right. So what happened is uh, we found this condo, and it was on the other side of Division, uh, just north of Rancho Vista Boulevard. And it was a standalone little cottage. And I walked in the door, and I am not exaggerating when I tell you right now I got goosebumps. From the top of my foot, from the top, bottom of my feet, to the top of my head, I had goosebumps. And I called Karen. I says, Karen, you won't believe it, but I'm standing in your home. She goes, how do you know that? I says, because I'm covered with goosebumps. She says, really? Is it, is it three bedroom condo like I wanted? I said, no, it's only two. She goes, but you got goosebumps. I says, man, they're for real. You better get over here. And she came over and she says, oh my gosh, I love this place. It was a God thing. So the day came, Karen had been through so much, married for something like 30 years, never owned her own home. And I called her with the keys in the morning. And I said, Karen, guess what today is? She goes, I know. I could hear the tears in her voice. She, I, I says, it sounds like you're crying. She says, I am. I says, why are you crying? I said, I got the keys to your house. She goes, because I thought this day would never come. And I took these keys to her, and I held them up. And I says, Karen, these are not just two pieces of metal for opening a door. So this is the beginning of a better life, I promise you. And we were both in tears. If you look closely at this picture, you can probably see. But that's one of the things I wanted to tell you today about real estate. I want you to be motivated to do the hard work and the things you've got to do. And yeah, yeah, we can rah, rah, and all that. But if it's not in here, it's not going to happen. That 
transaction got me hooked on real estate. Yeah. Okay. All right, the other picture I'm going to show you is this, because this is one of my motivations for real estate. I mean, I'd like to be number one in this office, and I'd like to own my own agency. There's lots of things I'd like. But at my point in life, I'm really all about quality of life. This is a picture of me in 1994, and the guy whose hand I'm shaking is none other than Steve Irwin. OK, the croc man, the guy that died because of Stingray, right? In 1994, nobody had ever heard of this guy. But I just happened to be in Brisbane, Australia. Because I went to college, and the friend, my best friend in college was from Brisbane, Australia, convinced me to come over there, and I, and I like to travel. You'll see on my Facebook page places that I've been. I went to a, a cruise of Alaska a few years ago. I went to Fiji, I went to Australia again. I've been there four times. I show you this because real estate can make your dreams come true. It's not just work. It's not just money. It is quality of life. What kind of a life do you want? You can have any kind of life you want. There was one year, and I'm not bragging, but there was one year I took five vacations. Okay. Fiji, Australia, Hawaii, uh, Alaska, and I went up to see my grandkids in Portland. Five vacations in one year because real estate gave me that freedom. But you've got to work. You've got to pay your dues. You've got to make those phone calls when you're not traveling. And you've got to make those phone calls when you are traveling. I'm just going to pass that around. Please make sure it comes back. But Steve Irwin wasn't even heard of back then. Real estate has given me so much freedom to live the kind of life that I want. And you can make unlimited amounts of money, if that's your thing. Unlimited amounts of money. But you've got freedom as well. All right, let's begin our lesson. Because we don't want to lose track of that. That's my story, so I'll try to limit it to those few. Thank you. We think that you look better now than in that photo. Oh, yeah. OK, let's, let's establish something right here and now. I was having a bad hair day. Uh, I was skinnier then. And um, Australia is very humid. Just leave it at that. All right, let us begin with today's expectations. Today, we're, it's all about finding business. Where can you find business? I already told you, if somebody's room temperature or above, they are a potential client. But there are ways that you can spend your time more profitably than others. So we're going to find business. We're going to prospect and lead generate. Did you need one of these? You probably need one of these, too. We're going to connect with potential clients, and we're going to obtain referrals. That's what we do as real estate agents. Today's session is find your business. Why do we call this Ignite? It's the kind of your motivation ignited. That's right. We need your motivation ignited. How much does a space shuttle weigh? A lot. Especially when it's got like a million gallons of fuel attached to it. How much energy does it take to get a space shuttle off the ground and into orbit? It's a rhetorical question in case any of you are engineers. I really don't want to know. But it's an enormous amount of energy. And the gravity in your life that holds you down is very strong. Don't underestimate it. So the energy it's going to take and the effort it's going to take to get you off the ground and to launch your career is enormous. Be prepared to bring it. You cannot change your life with little changes. You can change your life with massive action. And that's what Ignite is all about. All right, let's get started. We have our expectations and we have our action reveal. How many of you guys have done be honest with me, how many, have you, how many of you have done all the things you were supposed to do on your action reveal for lesson number three? Anybody? Anybody? Two? Two people? Really? Honestly? Three? Okay. 
All right, three people have done everything, and this is, I'm not putting down the ones that didn't. I don't think I did everything. But should I reward the ones that did? Yeah, let's give them a round of applause. If you did all of the action items for lesson three, you deserve an award. Congratulations. We applaud you. Now, the rest of you, you guys are cappers in training. I forgot my cappers badge. I was going to wear my cappers badge. Look at, look at Vic over there. He's like, ah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome, Thank you, man. You were my inspiration the other day. Thank you. <laughs> All right, anybody in here? I know four people did. Anybody else in here add 10 contacts to their database? 10 contacts? Awesome. Great. Congratulations. Anybody in here make uh, 10 connections? Somebody you never met before? You guys did. Made 10 connections. Anybody else make 10? How about anybody have an open house? Anybody have an open house? Since, uh, not, not since last class, but in the last week or two. One, two, three, four, five. All right, you guys are doing it. This is what I call massive action. How many sent out 10 notes? Or even five? How about five notes? Oh, what's that, text? <laughs> well, theoretically, no. Yeah, so it's three right here. There you go. And here, this is, uh, yeah. And how many people previewed, let's say, even five homes? Did you guys do it as a, did you do it uh, showing a buyer, or did you do it just because you wanted to do it? Ah, good job, good job. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys are doing the work, and I'm proud of you. Keep doing it because it's going to change your life. It's going to give you that freedom that you need to move ahead and to have the kind of life that you want to have. All right. Now, are you guys ready to lead generate? How many people brought uh, a list of contacts for them to call that they're ready to call right now? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the majority of you uh, don't have contacts right now. So the rest of you who don't have contacts, do you have an open house scheduled for this weekend? Yes, always. You do? Okay, guys, open houses are the best ways to lead generate. I mean, one of the best ways. Call an agent, go on the MLS and find a house Maybe that's vacant or maybe it's not, but maybe an agent that you know or maybe an agent you don't know. If it's somebody from this market center, they're sure to let you do it. And if they have multiple houses uh, on the market, they're sure to let you do an open house at one of them. Give them a call. Set up an open house. Uh, go online and study or call me or ask anybody that you want on how to do an open house. Have a successful open house and you're going to get buyers. Do that consistently. How many open houses did you do last weekend, Brandon? You did two? But I've heard you say some weekends where you've done four. How many, what's the most you've ever done in a weekend? Five. Five open houses in one weekend. And did you get a buttload of leads from that? Sometimes you don't get anything. Sometimes you don't get anything. That's right. That, it, real estate is a numbers game. That's the truth of it. But if you door knock around that house, if you put up a lot of signs, and you perform an open house effectively, you are going to get leads. All right, turn to page nine. Let's go over one of the, a couple of these scripts. These are scripts for calling so that you can get out your phone, make some calls, and get some business. Leads are everywhere. That's the other thing I want you to understand. I mean, I've already said it that anybody's room temperature above, but really, business is everywhere. I was standing in the hot dog line at Costco one time, and there were like three people ahead of me and about five people behind me, and I turned to the guy behind me, and this is really the most effective script I've ever used. You can write it down if you want. I said, hi, my name is Ken Mitchell. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. Just like this. I turned around, I says, 
Hi, my name is Ken Mitchell. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. Who do you know that might be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate that I can talk to today? And the guy was an investor. He goes, I'm an investor. Me and my dad, we buy houses all the time. Boom. By the time I got to the front of the line to order my hot dog, I already had all of his contact information. He was added to my database right after that, and I stayed in touch with him, and we did business. It's just like that. How many had I closed by then? With him? With him? Oh, three or four. Yeah, it's worth it. Oh, I've had crazier things than that happen, let me tell you. All right, on page nine, I think you're on, let me see if this has page nine. Yeah, that's right. So they don't have nine up here, but you can go to page nine in your book. Let's look at one of these scripts. This is a script asking for referrals. Hi, Susan. My name is Ken Mitchell with Keller Williams Realty. Your name was given to me. And, and by the way, anytime you ask for business, say, who do you know that might be looking? You're asking for a referral. Yeah, you're hoping that person needs business, but you are also asking for a referral. Who do you know? See, that's different than do you know anybody? For some reason, do you know anybody is easy for people to just say no. But when you say, who do you know? That's a different phrase of the same question but it starts activating the mind. Who do you know? Brain starts searching for data. Who do I know? Who do I know? Who do I know what? That's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate that this guy can call today. Who do I know? Oh, well, my brother's looking for a house. See, it's a different phraseology, but I'm telling you it works. So this is asking for a referral. Hi, uh, Susan, my name is Ken Mitchell with Keller Williams Realty. Your name was given to me by some lady at a gas station or whatever, from a close friend of both of ours. Uh, Mary Beth, and she said that I should give you a call. Is right now a good time to talk for a couple of minutes? Excellent. <laughs> All right, so if somebody said no, what would you say? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, but hang on. That's, that, that's fine. It'll only take a minute. Let me ask you a simple question. Say it louder. It'll only take a minute. It'll like, ask him as much data as you can right now. That's right, right then and there. It'll only take a minute. Let me ask you a couple questions. Okay. And that's worked on me before, too, when people have called me about things. All right. Well, tell me what your spiel is. Yeah, you just go right in for it. Uh, your name, uh, your friend said that you were thinking about buying or selling a house in the next three months and asked if I would please give you a call. She said and she and I both want to make certain that you are in great hands and that you have the very best, so that's why I'm calling. I've also heard it said this, and this has worked for me effectively many, many times. I would hate for your friend, this is trying to get a referral. I would hate for your friend in a moment of weakness to fall for a weak agent. Mm. Mm. So I want to give them a call today. I know th this is often how I respond to somebody who says, yeah, I'm going to give them your number. And, but they're actively looking right now. And I would hate for your friend to fall for a weak agent at a time like this. Please let me, let me contact them and let's get this, let me help them. Let's do the right thing. That's another thing, write that down. Let's write that down. Let's do the right thing and whatever. People resonate with that. Here, here's another one. If you will do whatever, I, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. If you will give me your friend's information, here's what I'm gonna do. You see that leverage, that angle? If you'll give me your friend's information, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call them in the next 10 minutes, and I'm going to tell them that you suggested that I give them a call. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to send them listings today, if you'll do that. And then I'm going to CC you on in the email. Will that be OK? Yeah. There are ways to effectively uh, talk to people. Since everybody likes to know what houses are selling for, I'd like to share my real estate app with you. You can see what's going on anywhere from your street to any place in North America. It's free. There's no cost to you, and I can send you a text to link to, link to it. Does that sound good? Great. You always want to affirm them. Now, if they're buying, have you seen anything you like thus far? Great. Are you working with any other agent? No, that's good. Affirmation, you're always affirming whatever they say. And 
You start from there. You can always bring in your objectives or you can bring in your ideas, but you start with affirming whatever they say. All right, when they are selling, oh man, that's when I get excited. I love listings. I don't know why. I guess when you've been in real estate for a while, you start to lean toward the listings. Because when you have the listings, you get to be creative. You get to stage your home. You get to think about the angle that that photographs more beautifully from, the time of day, uh, everything about it. There's all kinds of techniques. Here's one you can write down. Wet down the driveway before you photograph the house. That is really effective, especially at, especially at dusk. You know, you turn on all the lights in the house, every single light, you wait till the sun's just below the horizon, you wet down the driveway, the sky is reflecting off that beautiful wet driveway, the porch lights are on, the interior lights are on. That's called a twilight shot, and it is super effective in a photograph. It makes a house look like it's worth twice what it actually is. I've taken some real pieces of, uh, I've taken some really bad looking houses and made them look great. <laughs> All right, if they are selling, when are you planning to move? That is super important. Like Brando said, get all the information you can as soon as you meet somebody. When are you planning to move? And why are you planning to move? Because a person's motivation is hugely important. It's gonna be a very short time for me, probably two years or less, that somebody's gonna ask me that question and I'm gonna say, I wanna to move to Portland. I want to be next to my grandkids, because that's where two of my grandkids are. And if my three grandkids here move up to Portland, I'm out of here. <laughs> and somebody's going to ask me that question at the right time. Of course, I'm going to sell my house myself, <laughs> but uh, I might not. The point is, there's always, the timing is so important, and a person's motivation is so important. And if you can tap into that, sometimes just the tiniest little detail will give you another foothold and you go on to the next question, the next question. Next thing you know, you're engaged with that person. They like you and people want to do business with people they like and trust. You can write that down too, anywhere in your notes. People want to do business with people they like and trust. And you want to get as much information as you can. Okay, when are you planning to move? Have you listed with another agent? No, excellent. That person, you want to lock in on that person. The next step is for us to get together. I can answer all your questions and explain how the entire process works. It'll only take about 20 minutes. Can we meet today or would tomorrow be better for you? Yeah, the, one of the goals is to give them like two times. That, that works for you, not works for them. Uh, I'm the president of the KW Toastmasters Club here at Keller Williams Realty that meets in this very room every Monday night at 6.30. Several of my Toastmaster friends are right here in the front row. Raise your hand if you've ever been involved in Toastmasters. Yes, excellent. Another one in the back, several, yes. We have a Toastmasters Club that meets on the east side as well. The reason I bring that up is because sometimes Toastmasters, they don't make it to the meeting because somebody wants them on a listing appointment. But you do have con some control. Yeah, I mean, if somebody says, no, it's gotta be Monday night, that's my only time, then, then definitely go on a listing appointment instead of coming to Toastmasters. But by and large, if you give people a couple of times to choose from that are convenient for you, not during your Toastmaster club, or not during your wedding anniversary with your wife or husband, or not during whatever, they will, they'll comply. And then you make it work for you and you make it work for them and you're both comfortable and you go in and you get that deal, okay? So give them a couple times. So if they say no, say I understand, just so you know, I have a wealth of interesting and timely information about the real estate market in your area and I'd love to send it to you. Let me make sure I have your current email address. And do me a favor, please. If you hear of someone with real estate need, will you keep me in mind? Pause. Let them know that you're not just saying that. You really mean it. Will you keep me in mind? Say it with all sincerity, and they'll give it to you. They probably will. 
And after you, let's see. Um, great. And after you download the app and try it out, send me a text and let me know how you like it. Now, that's something I've never done before. But that's, that's a good idea. Once I send you the, uh, the application, try to use it, see how you like it, give me a text and let me know. Give me some feedback. I'd appreciate that. Thank you for your time today. And please let me know if there's anything I can ever do for you. These are great scripts, guys. These will make your life change. New to real estate. Uh, again, how many have not done a deal yet? You're, and how many have only done one or two? Same ones? All right, so, so the next script, which is on the very next page, if your book is the same as mine, is for new agents. Hello, this is Ken Mitchell. Do you have a moment? I'd like to share the exciting news that I have become a real estate agent with Keller Williams Realty. With this new partnership, I have all their knowledge working for me. Plus, my clients get all, all my enthusiasm and hard work. I thought about sharing this with you because I knew you'd be someone to help me grow my business. You know, that also sounds like something you could leave on a voicemail message with someone. If you called them, they didn't answer the phone, and you left that script, and you did it effectively, I think there's a good chance that they would call you back. All right. On page 12, some of you already have thank you notes. The, the, does anybody here have um, somebody that they need to send a note to? We've got two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> Guys, let's take the next five minutes and fill out those notes. You don't have any cards? Guess what, I got some cards. How many do you need? Two. Two? All right. That is your next exercise. By the way, you can get these in bulk at Walmart. Anybody else need cards? How many do you need? Uh -huh. I'll give you two for now. Who else needs cards? They're not, but you can put your business card inside. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. There you go, guys. I don't have very many left. Four minutes. And you're sending texts, right? You can send texts. If you've got clients you need to text to, send them a text. two or three we're gonna get that done right now because that is your next exercise I'm going to do a selfie. <laughs> hey, guys, wave at me for a second, will you? <laughs> I got to keep my social media game going.
two more minutes. I got a potential uh, seller texting me right now. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. If you can. <laughs> While you're doing that, I, I want to tell you something. Those times that I went on vacation, I always worried. Uh, a lot of times I began the vacation with apprehension. Sometimes I didn't even want to go, to be honest with you. But my wife wanted to go, and my family wanted to go. And I would think, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to my business? I have seven escrows going right now. One time, I literally went on vacation. I had 17 escrows active at that moment. And I thought my head was going to explode. I did have a business partner at the time. Many of you know Christine Halagian. She was my business partner. But I went with apprehension. And almost every time I went on vacation, I, w I was worried that my business was going to fall apart or something bad was going to happen. But I went anyway. And I learned after enough of these vacations that things will take care of themselves. You can communicate with your clients and get business done while you're gone. It's just there's times when you vacation and there are times when you're sitting there in your hotel room with your laptop taking care of business. And then just have a little bit of faith. And there have been, and it's a running joke in my family that I get more business when I'm on vacation than when I'm here. Because deals would come through. Contracts would appear. People would say yes. I, and offers would come through. When I couldn't sell a house for two or three months and then all of a sudden on my vacation, I'm getting two or three offers. What the heck? So I went through that cycle and I finally learned that you can live a great life and be a real estate agent, and you can go on vacations, and you can live the life of your dreams. All right, let's go ahead and turn to page 13 now. Get your head in the game. I'm going to ask you a question. Why is active lead generation important? Why is active lead generation important? Anybody want to answer? Pretty much most of your business comes from. That's where most of your business comes from. That's correct. There's going to be somebody like Karen who hears that you got your real estate license and is going to give you a piece of business. That could happen. Or somebody's going to see, they're going to drive by a sign that you have up and they're going to call you. I sold a house in Lake Elizabeth just because I had the sign in the front yard. And that lady did multiple transactions with me. But that was it. She saw my sign. I never called her. But what are some other reasons to lead generate? How many people like to get paid? Money. Money fuels everything. Would you like your income to be a roller coaster where it goes up and then it goes down and you're broke and you can't make your car payment or your house payments? No. Nobody wants that. And lead generation allows your income to be steady and even to grow and grow year after year after year. Remember I told you I made $125,000 as a uh, as a print salesman in Los Angeles, but I drove 70 miles from my home to my, do my office every single day for 11 years. And my quality of life kind of sucked. I drove 49,000 miles a year. Yeah. So uh, that, that wasn't quality of life. And when I got into real estate, it was hard at first. I had that one transaction, then I had a very long dry period where I went probably five or six months without any money. And it was tough. But then, then all of a sudden I got a lot of business. And then it grew from there. And by my third year, I was probably making 100 k a year, $100,000. And I've made $100,000 every year since. So if I, and if I can do that, so can you guys. Well, thank you. You guys want to participate, don't you? All right, so any other reasons to lead generate? How about lifelong friends like Karen? Karen is such a dear friend now. This transaction went so well. 
And next week, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm already scheduled to go to her house to start the listing process for her con condo. By the way, when Karen's condo closed, I had a little sign, wooden sign made up, hand painted, that said Karen's condo with two K's. And that's above her mantle today. So, man, the relationships you can build in the real estate business are just, that's the icing on the cake. That is another reason to lead generate. Active lead generation ensures that not only will you get business quickly, but when done consistently, consistently, it also ensures a steady stream of business. Said another way, active lead generation turns the feast or famine cycle that most agents go through and creates a steady upward increase in business. What do you think is different about the lead generation of successful agents compared to their not so successful peers? Say it loud. Consistency. That is number one. That's absolutely true. Did, how many of you guys were in here? Please raise your hands if you were in here for the panel yesterday. One, two. You, if you watch it online, raise your hand. Four, five, six, seven. OK, about uh, 2 thirds of you didn't see it. And I understand why you didn't come. You're not getting an award. You know, this is going to be the same old people to get awards all the time. But they had a question and answer session afterwards. And Thomas Pulaska said something that I thought was so profound yesterday. Here he is. He, he, made, he, uh, he did 118 transactions last year. And th yeah, wow, that's, that's amazing. And he is an amazing agent. He is a machine. But he said something that should resonate in the hearts of each one of you. And I wish you were here to, to hear it. He said, you know what works? Whatever you do works. He said, even if you make five phone calls a day, but you do it every single day. But who can't make five phone calls? Any one of us can. He's, he said that, the guy, the man. That is the truth of it. If you're just a little consistent like that, what a difference that will make in your life. Yes? I want to emphasize on that. Uh, so for the six kids, uh, um, my goal were to close and I made five calls per day, and I closed 49. Ooh, that deserves a round of applause. You are an incredible agent. And you are also a Toastmaster. I don't want to say that there's a connection here, ladies and gentlemen, but there might be. OK, but the, the main thing that I'm trying to get across here right now, and it's so important, is consistency. Even if you make five phone calls a day, you know, it's better to make one phone call a day and say you're going to do it and do it than to say, I'm going to do 50 and then don't do any. Seriously. You guys, if I can't, I don't know how to stress this enough. Get in the pattern of success. Success for you today might be making one phone call. Build a habit. Build a habit of success. Don't, don't build a habit of failure saying, I'm going to make 50 phone calls a day. Baloney. If you're not going to do that, don't say it. But whatever you do say, do it. Um, I was one of those phone calls that Tom Palaskis. Is that right? Yeah, actually, my parents. It was like one evening, and all of a sudden I showed up uh, in the evening, and there was this big basket there with the market analysis personalized with my dad's name on it. Wow. And I, Whoa. It and I was just like, whoa, this is intense and it had a little booklet and it showed his kids and it talked about his history and his family and so he called my stepdad can you guys all hear this okay so he called talked to my stepdad and then said hey you know would you want me to bring you some information he was at our house within 10 minutes wow. with this with package and it's still there like in our pantry and his info is still there. is that right what was in the package was there food in it um, no food. No. Um, but it was just like an oven mitt, you know, those typical household, household. items. And then, like I said, his packet. And then it was another packet about um, tips to sell. Mm. But his family thing was kind of, it, I remembered him. And then I thought, who would I choose at the top of mind when I first came here? And it was him. Mm. And wow. Him. Let's give Thomas a round of applause. That, that is, that's black belt technology right there, people. Really Write that stuff down. Remember that. 
But the most important thing for you at this point is making phone calls, that's for sure. The difference between successful and not so successful agents is that successful agents make lead generation a daily habit and set out to master the skills, the systems, and the tools of lead generation. How many people here have an accountability partner? All right, if you don't have an accountability partner, try to get somebody who's already successful in this business or somebody who you know is motivated and it's gonna get you motivated. Don't be too nice to them, like I'm always too nice to my accountability partners and they're too nice to me because we're so affable. Right, Brando? It didn't, it didn't work. We were accountability partners for a while, but we're like, hey, man, I'm sorry I'm late. That's OK, you know? <laughs> you probably needed to stop at McDonald's and get a sausage McMuffin. I really did, because I was having a rough morning. That's OK. <laughs> no, just somebody's going to kick, somebody's say, hey, man, I'm starving. I can't pay my bills this month. I need somebody to kick me in the butt. And that's the person that you want, right? But if I was going to go to the gym, this guy would be the inspiration because he, he's, he's on it. He's on it on lead generation, too. He's, he's doing quite well. All right, next page. Page 14. Make it happen. Prospects, pro prospecting. And discuss questions on page 15. All right, prospecting is an investment and a commitment to your business. This is the funnel that they talk about, leads. Uh, leads can lead to appointments. Appointments are lead to agreements. Agreements lead to contracts. Contracts lead to payday. Everything before that, you don't get paid. That's money out of your pocket. You don't get paid till the bottom line. When you close escrow, and you want to close escrow a lot. Prospecting is an investment. This is page 15. And commitment to your business. Prospecting is critical to your business for the following reasons. It is, uh, prospecting in here is important because here it's inexpensive. How much does it cost to make a phone call? Zero. How much does it cost to put an ad on, to pay for an ad on Facebook? You can spend hundreds of dollars. You can spend, I was spending $1,700 a month on Zillow. And I was getting these crappy leads. You know what, all I really needed to do was pick up my phone and make phone calls. That's all I needed to do. Make phone calls, knock on doors. Can I, guess tell, you, can I tell you guys another little story real quick? I was walking a neighborhood, really nice neighborhood in Rancho Vista, West Rancho Vista area, and uh, I, I saw a plumber going in and out of this house. And this lady had a no soliciting sign that I am not exaggerating, was like the biggest no soliciting sign I had ever seen. And are you intimidated by no soliciting signs? Come on. It's OK if you are. Because I mean, I, I, you know, it makes me think twice. But this time, I didn't hesitate because she was already disturbed by a plumber going in and out of the house. Knocked on the door. And I only had one script at the time. Hi, my name's Ken Mitchell. Who do you know that might be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate that I can talk to today? I am not exaggerating. She went, me? I can't wait to sell this house. I've been wondering who to call. Me and my boyfriend, we already have a house picked out in Nevada or someplace. And I'm like, really? She said, yeah. Said, How soon can you bring your contract over? I can be back in an hour. OK, let's do it. Find out what my house is worth. Let's put it on the market. And boom, 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 boom. I sold her house. And it was a really nice house. It was a great transaction. Another time, I'm with a guy, two guys were driving in her car. And this one guy had been in construction for 40 years, and he was really nervous about door knocking. And he hated it when people came to his door. That's why he was so nervous about it, because he would always slam the door in their face. So he thought he was going to get the same treatment. He says, I'm so nervous. I says, dude, just follow my lead. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's put our feet on the ground, man. This is business. And uh, the first door we knocked on, this guy came to the door, and I, I, I said, I said, Joking, I said, this is how it's done, son. <laughs> like that to him, just to break the ice. And I knocked on the door. I said my spiel. The guy said, I cannot wait to buy a house. He said, I'm paying $2,000 a month to rent this house. And I hate it. 
and it just so happened that he was a fighter pilot, an Italian fighter pilot, who had immigrated to the United States and was working for NASA. Now he's one of the head pilots at Virgin Galactic, right? He's one of their PR guys and all that. And uh, I had to hang with him for a year because he was from Italy, had no credit in the United States. But once we established credit, he bought a brand new $450,000 house in West uh, uh, Palmdale, I think it's Palmdale. And uh, yay, know. this was like my first year in business. Mm -hmm. So there's so many opportunities. Okay, so anyhow, making phone calls, door knocking, having open houses, it's inexpensive and it yields immediate results. It puts you in control of filling your pipeline of leads. Lead generation increases your confidence and your skill. The more you do it, the better you get at it. It's that simple. That's why we have scripts. Scripts sound mechanical at first when you're doing them, but after a while, you get so good at it, you put your own spin on it. After a while, you're gonna get so good, you'll pick up on other people's accents. Like if they're from the South, or if they're from the Midwest, and you can even mimic, mimic their accent just a little bit. At, the most important thing is their pace. If they talk really, really fast, or if they talk really slow, you, you really need to match that pace. Or if they're loud. I got one guy, he's in construction, and every time I go to see him, man, he's pissed off about this and that going on in the state of California. He doesn't like these laws, he can't wait to get out of here. And you know what, when I talk to him, I talk the same way. I say, you're damn straight, man, I'm sick of this bullshit too. <laughs> I think you ought to pack up and move. Let me get your house on the market right away. He goes, and then he said to me, he said, yeah, and I got 10 of them to sell. And they're all in Lake LA. God, man, I hate to be in your shoes. Let's get rid of those houses right away. And every time I talk to him, I'm loud, even if I call him on the phone. We're loud and proud, and we curse and swear or whatever. Well, not, not, not a whole lot, not necessarily, but I'm telling you, I match that guy every time I'm with him. And then I have a lady who's in Green Valley, and she's a really sweet widow. As a matter of fact, I met her the day her husband died, which was very sad. And I did get the listing, which was very, made me very happy. But I, I'm, when I'm talking to her, I'm soft-spoken. I respect her. I use the same vocabulary she uses. Uh, we, have a, we have a really, really seriously, we do have a connection. I, I, I feel for her. I, this was two, three or four years ago when her husband died. But I stay in touch with her. I call her now and then. It's a people business, people. The myth is that prospecting equals annoying people equals rejection. I mean, there's truth and falseness to this. What's that? It is false. The truth is, Prospecting equals meeting people and building purposeful business relationships equals a strong real estate business. It is a mindset. It's all in your head. So believe the truth that prospecting equals meeting people, building purposeful relationships. I have had doors slammed in my face. I said to myself, write this word down. This is one of the most important words you need to learn in this business. Next. <laughs> Get over it. Yeah, that person might have had a bad day. I'll tell you another story. Oh my gosh, I'm so. Christine Halagian, my former business partner, she went early in her business. She knocked on her door, and the lady was like on the phone and not really into it. And she opened the door, and Christine introduced herself, and she just slammed the door in her, in her face without saying anything. And she, Christine was devastated. But I, we made a rule. Our rule in prospecting, if somebody answers the door, good or bad, you're going to send them a thank you note. Okay. Christine sent her the most heartfelt thank you note of anybody. And she goes, I don't know what was going on in your life. Uh, you might have been having a bad day. I'm really sorry I disturbed you. But if I can ever be of service to you in the future, please call me. Here's my card. You know what happened? She called her. The same day she got that card. And she listed her house. And she sold it. Part of that lady's frustration was she couldn't afford the house she was in. And that's why she was so, one of the reasons she was so crabby. And she apologized all over the place to Christine, and they became great friends. True story. Amazing. It's all mindset, people. 
All right, turn to page 16. We're there. The four C's of prospecting. Capture, connect, cultivate, and close. You first capture leads by getting their contact information. Uh, here's a mistake. If you're chatty like me, and I admit that I am chatty, uh, you go up to a house and you knock on a door, and this happens to me all the time. Somebody says one word, and I go, you're from Wisconsin. And I go, how did you know? I says, because I'm from Michigan. What? You're from Wisconsin, I'm from Michigan? We have all this in common, right? And, and you chat it up, and you never ask for the business. Go, have a nice day. I love talking to you. I'm gone. <laughs> don't do that. You need to get their information. Even if they're not selling, they don't know anybody, let, let, let me just get you my contact information. Let me get yours. Let's stay in touch. You sound like the kind of person that I'd like to stay in touch with. I'll, I'll give you updates on your neighborhood now and then. Get their contact information. That is number one. Don't forget to do that. That, that, that I, I'm telling you, it's one of my weaknesses. One of my strengths is connecting with people, though. Then connect by establishing a relationship. If you can find something in common with someone, anything, doesn't matter what it is. Oh, you have hair on your head. I got hair on my head. That's, <laughs> do you wash your hair every day? Get out of here. I wash my hair every day, too. Wow. <laughs> right? Uh, but connect with people. Try to find something in common with them. That's one of the best ways. The other thing is mirroring and matching, matching their pace of speech. Um, I was in Texas one time, and I got, literally got lost. This is a true story. Got lost, pulled off the side of the road, and there was this old guy walking down the road. And I said, sir, can you tell me where to find um, Killeen, Killeen, Texas? Well. He leans over to my car and he goes, you see that road down there? About two miles past that road is Highway 138, whatever it was. He goes, take that, you go, let, no, you go right. And it was like, I wanted to reach into the guy's throat and pull the words out. He talked so slow and there was so much room in between the words. And it was such a challenge for me. And I always remember that because when you meet with clients, you've got to find something in common. You've got to connect. You have to match their pace. If they talk slow and you talk fast, you know what they're going to think about you? you you're slick. Talk. What's that? You want to take advantage of them because you're smarter than them because you talk faster than them and you think you're smarter than them and you think you're better than them. That's how slow-talking people think about fast-talking people. And what about the reverse? Yeah, if, if you talk to somebody in there, they talk quick, quickly and rapidly, and they get to the point quickly, and you're meandering through your presentation, they're going to think, this dude is not too bright. <laughs> and they're, even though they're, they're going to quit talking, they're going to look like they're listening to you, but they're, they're yeah, disconnected. They're, like, yeah. they're checked out. They're like, when is this ever going to stop? So it, it, when they have a class in here on the DISC profile system, definitely take that. That is a huge advantage. Here at Keller Williams Realty, we used to talk about that all the time. I don't know why we don't anymore. But if you can figure out whether a person is a D, I, S, or C, that is hugely important. If somebody is a D personality, they do not want to be entered. They trying to nudge her and say, give, give him the contract. Just tell him where to sign. And, and I've done the same thing, where I'm chatty and I'm going off and I've got my script in my head and I, I got my whole spiel down and we, we had a great one. And no, that person was ready to sign. And I, I've lost deals because of it. You got to know your audience. You got to know who you're working with. Finally, close them for an appointment and eventually to buying or selling real property, because that's when you get paid. 
when you close escrow. <clears throat> and lastly, cultivate them to maintain and strengthen your relationship. Let me go back to the beginning when I told you about Leslie Gowen. Leslie Gowen is one of the founders of the Keller Williams here in the Antelope Valley 10 years ago. And Leslie Gowen, I told you, she was my real estate agent for 10 years before I became an agent. She's been to every one of my kids' weddings. She's brought gifts each time a grandchild was born. And I've had five of them. And uh, she has been there for all of our birthdays, wedding anniversaries. She remembers these things. And not just us, our entire sphere of influence. All of our friends know Leslie Gowen. And, and she goes to events at their house I'm not even invited to. But that's because she is so good at this cultivating relationships. She was practically a part of our family. That's the kind of agent you want to be. That's the kind of agent that they wouldn't even think about calling somebody else. They're going to call you. They're going to call you every time. And I, I hope that I have clients like that. They wouldn't even dream of calling one of you all. <laughs> they would call Ken Mitchell, because I'm practically part of their family. They know I'm thinking about them all the time, because I stay in touch with them. So the more information you can get, the better. Anniversary dates, if they have children, if their kids live in the area. Even if their kids live out of the area, they might be moving back. It's, it's all important. So uh, business building conversations aim to achieve these goals. Get an appointment or get a referral. Get an appointment and a referral. And they always accomplish the following. They strengthen the relationship. OK, the goal, I'm on page 17 now. Your sphere of influence. Wait, that's page 21. Hang on. Page 17. Yeah, you're right. This, this doesn't look like that, though. I'm, OK, it's OK. Number one is capture. We talked about the four things, capture, connect, cultivate, and close. Number one is capture. The goal of building a database is to capture as many haven't mets as possible and turn them into mets quickly, and then turn mets into repeat and referral business. One of the best ways to do this is to leverage your mets through prospecting. In Ignite session one and two, you've been capturing contact information from your mets, but odds are you still don't have all the information you need from everyone. Are you, is your seven, page 17 look like my page 17? Okay, we're all on the same page, good. So look at the categories here, the name, phone number, email, mailing address, connected on social media. How many of you guys have invited your clients or potential clients to be your friend on Facebook? Only four, five, six, okay. It's okay if they don't respond back, but if you reach out, there's gonna be a certain number that will. And maybe some of them you don't even want to be Facebook friends once you've checked out their page. And there's some weirdo guy and they got a tattoo. Uh, not, not that tattoos ain't wrong, but let's say it's a bad tattoo. It happens. Uh, remember, every time you speak with someone in your database, make sure you have all their information. If your conversation in your conversation, just add on, by the way, what's your fill in the blank? What's your kid's name? I called a guy, who was that recently? It was, a, it was a lender friend of mine. And I was surprised that he knew my, my son's names. Both of my sons. One lives in Portland. Not even, a, but he's a lender. He could do a loan up there too. And, and um, he knew my kids' names. And I didn't even remember telling him. So that's interesting. By the way, what's your, and then fill in the blank. Then enter into your database immediately. The more information you have on a client, the more effective you're going to be at connecting with them. Number two is connect. This is on page 18. Oh, before we do that, all right, so um, turn to page 18. Successful real estate agents understand how important it is to connect with people. We've already talked about that. And refine this skill by doing it often and consistently. Your goal in the connect step is to approach an individual in a way that builds rapport and trust. One of the best ways is with questions. Because 
I mean, you do want somebody to like you and you want to establish rapport, but you really need, it, it's not going to get you anywhere unless you have information, their information. You meet somebody in the mall and you hit it off, you introduce yourself, but you don't get their information. It's not going to do you any good. You've got to get their information. So here are some connecting questions. Get details to add to your database. If you would please tell me a little bit about your family, your job, your life, etc. That's the who. You want to know who that person is. Assess their wants, needs, and plans. What are you looking for? What do you want to do? Because um, there have been times when I've been surprised when I thought somebody just wanted to buy and I didn't ask them. This really happened to me. I did not ask them, do they need to sell first? Mm -hmm. And guess who got the listing? Somebody else. And I represented them on the buy. I could have had that listing. I could have my, maybe even double-ended it. Lost business because I didn't ask enough questions. Too busy this and not enough of this. So I, I have learned the hard way. Pinpoint their location. Where would you like to buy? Where is your home currently located? Determine their motivation. Why are you moving? Now, that, that's hugely important. The reason that it's hugely important is because you're going to keep going back to that over and over again. Uh, I've got a client right now in Santa Clarita that wants to sell. It's a bit of a delicate situation because his, the truth is he's getting on in age. He is 79, and he wants to move to Texas. And I'm trying to find gentle ways of saying, without coming out and saying it, you know, Jim, you're not going to be around forever. Time is ticking, son. It's time to bust a move. You know, if you're going to move to Texas you, and you're still walking, he still has his faculties, let's do it. He's got a million reasons why not. And I, I'm trying to give him how uh, solutions for every one of those and I do have solutions for every one of those uh, he's just not in that mindset yet and it's something that I'm learning to work with but the more information I can get and the more motivation you go back to that motivation over and over again Jim your son he's got a son that has special needs your son lives in Texas and you want to be by him for whatever time you have left Yeah, and, and he, his answer is an emotional response. Uh, we're, we're just not ready. Yeah, there's never going to be a perfect time. But there's going to come a time when you may not have any choice. Anyway, uh, it's, it's important to get as much information you can about motivation. And then on page 19, that's not on here, is it? is the close. Closing is the process of asking for business. Connecting is crucial. Uh, I will tell you, I had a recent experience where uh, I asked a very good friend of mine, he's very effective on the phone, and he's very effective with some of these dialing programs, and I, I said, can I sit in on you with you while you make phone calls? And he zeroed in on a, an area, and he called, and the first thing he said, hi, my name is Blank, I'm with Keller Williams Realty. Are you planning on selling your home anytime soon? No rapport. And I'm not, I'm not judging him because he sells more than I do. But I'm, I'm saying he was very direct. He asked for the business right away. Are you planning on selling your house? I would like to represent you if you are. That was his technique. And guess what? He's killing it. He's killing it. He calls people and it's just right away, none of this other stuff, none of the building rapport, none of the mirror matching, he just, he just goes for the juggler right away which I don't necessarily recommend. I'm saying it is effective for him, and it has worked. And I'm saying the mo this is the most important thing you can't neglect. You can't forget to do this. You can't just have a chatty conversation and build rapport and not ask for the business, because you're not going to get paid. You're just wasting your time and theirs. You're, you're nice. You're building rapport. Maybe you can call them back. You've got to ask for the business. Closing is a process of asking for business. 
Connecting is crucial, but unless you get their business, you won't be making any money. Many agents are very successful at connecting with people. Some, a lot of times they get into this business because they're a people person. It's the asking for business that is so challenging. Your goal for the call is to close for at least one of the following. And if you have this in front of you, maybe there's a better chance that you will make this happen. So the first one is ask for an appointment with them. Second one, if not, ask for a referral from them. Who do you know? What about your kids? Anybody? And I would go down a list oftentimes. What about somebody you work with? How about your church? Do you belong to any clubs? Is there anybody in any of these clubs that might be interested in purchasing a home right now? And then uh, number three, a reciprocal connection with them. So the hard close, let's meet. Matter of fact, let's, let's get you guys participating in this real quick. Who wants to read some of these um, out loud? Brando. Let's meet. Is that how you say it? Have you said it? It's a hard close. It's so hard. <laughs> let's get together. I would probably say let's get together. All right. Who wants? Let's get this game plan started. Yeah. Let's bust a move. Let's make it happen. <laughs> depends on <laughs> depends on the person you're talking to, right? I mean. All right, who, who, wa who wants to read this? When? Ah, that's another good one. When can we meet? Oh, I don't know. Then what would you say? Uh, well, these are, these are the times. I have this time, this time I can be here. Five minutes, I can be here in an hour. Please meet tomorrow morning. I can have everything prepared. Then you can meet in the morning. Yeah. Or if you can't make it in And your choice of which of those options might be de depending on the person. If somebody's, if you're on floor time and somebody calls you, I was in here on a Sunday one time and uh, about nine o'clock in the morning, this guy calls. I answer the phone and he says, I have talked to three real estate agents who all said they were coming to my house to list my house and none of them have shown up. My jaw dropped. I says, I'll be there in an hour. Yeah, I mean, let's get together. Number one complaint. Yeah, I've had three calls just since I've been in here. <laughs> How often, though, have I heard that? I'm going with you just because you returned my call. You know, it's not that you have to answer right away, but so many agents don't even answer their phone. Now, how many people here get robocalls? I get robocalls. Only you and me? What's with you? Anybody else? You get robocalls? So what happens when you see an out-of-state number? You don't, do you pick it up? It might be a lead. Can you just hang up if it is a robocall? Yes. You're better off to take the call. If I, really, right. if I know the number, they already called me before, I'll just, because I know who they are. Yeah. I mean, we, sometimes when you get robocalls, you can identify them. But, but it's harder and harder for, for agents to be able to take calls. But at least if somebody leaves you a voicemail me message, my gosh, call them back. Yeah. Yeah. I got a call from, uh, I was in Costco and my phone was ringing and it was saying, Sam Likely. And I was like, you know what, this time I'm going to answer and see who it is. And I swear it was a seller with three houses from San Diego and has like 20 houses all over California. Oh my gosh. And he had three houses in Palm Beach that he wanted to go ahead and list it. Woo! And it's a scam likely. Scam likely. I was like, I'm going to ask just to see why you're getting a scam likely call. Yeah. Who knows how many I missed already? Yeah, like exactly. One, that one call and I answered, he literally like listed three houses. That was like last year. That's awesome. Their 
You know what? There was an agent. That exact same thing happened. I'm trying to see who she was. There was an agent. They called me the other day. And I, I can't find the call right now. But I already had her saved in my phone. And, hey, hey, Angela. And she's, you, have, you know who I am? I said, yeah, I have your number saved in my phone. It makes people feel special, doesn't it? That's right. Good habit. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of Carloses in my phone. Honestly, a million of them. Write this down. Because this is going to be one of the most profound life lessons you will ever hear. Write this down. It's really, really, really important. People will remember you by the way you make them feel. You may already know that. Write it down anyhow. People will remember you by the way you make them feel. How do I make you feel? Do I make you feel good? Yeah. OK. So if you think of me, you're going to think positive things, right? And if you, somebody calls you and you already know who they are and you remember them, it, it means a lot. Those things add up over time. And pretty soon, people, you will become influential because of little things like that. All right, who wants to read the soft close? Awesome. Good job. So I've really enjoyed visiting with you. When would you like to get together to discuss this further? The, your inflection is going to be very important in how you say that. You want to say that with all sincerity and really mean it. Who wants to do the direct close? Bring it. Yeah, that's pretty direct. But you know what? That works for most people. Uh, that, and, and, and nine times out of 10, if they can't meet with you today, they will meet with you tomorrow. And if not, set a date. I mean, really, try to get an appointment anytime you can, because conversations, they come and they go like that. Who wants to read uh, number five, the trial close? Would it be OK if I got some information to look over and tell us that discuss it? Would it be OK if I got you some information to look over and then we can meet to discuss it. Yeah, that's, that's the indirect close, actually, number four. But you're in the right place. Uh, that would be effective as well. Who wants to do the trial close, number five? Um, anybody who hasn't read anything yet? Elizabeth, read number five, would you? Come on, we're on page 19. Her, her body language is telling me that she's a little tired and doesn't like being put on the spot, but you do have Toastmaster experience. Number five, the trial close. I think you would agree that we have gone over enough today that meeting with you is our next step. All right. How is that a close? It's not an appointment. It's an appointment. Yeah. And we'll meet you Any kind of affirmation is, an, is a close. Any kind of yes to anything that you say. Do you have kids? Yes. Good. Oh. Do they live in the area? No. Uh, where do they live, you know? I anytime you can get an affirmation, uh, a yes, keep, keep going, because eventually you'll get the appointment. Affirmations, yeses, lead to more yeses. All right, who wants to do the, uh, let's see, where are we at? Number six. Please. The assumptive close. Why is that assumptive? <coughs> That's right. You're, you're assuming they want to do business with you as well. And why wouldn't they? You're a wonderful agent. And you, you're coming from contribution to everything that you do, right? Have you guys already heard that expression? Yes. Come from contribution in everything you do. I'll, I'll give you one brief story on that. I was door knocking one time, and I was 
not in the mood. I'd had a lot of rejection. I'd done a lot of door knocking with no results. And I was kind of negative. You know what I did? I shook myself off and I said, by golly, I'm going to be, what am I going to be? I'm going to be the brightest star. spot in someone's day. Star, whatever you want to put. I'm going to be the brightest spot in someone's day. And I picked myself up. I put my shoulders back. I walked with new energy and I walked up to a door and I knocked on that door and said, hi, my name's Ken Mitchell. I'm with Keller Williams Realty. Who do you know that might be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate that I can talk to today? And she started crying. I said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you. She goes, my husband left me a year ago. He hasn't been paying the mortgage. I have five children, and I don't know what we're going to do. And I introduced her to short sale and sold her house. Someday that's going to happen to you. In maybe door knocking, maybe cold calling, but it's going to happen more often, and you're going to have a lot of stories of your own to tell. People need you. They do. Yeah, there's a bunch of people that don't. That doesn't matter. You need to focus on the ones that do need your services. Yes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, next. Yeah, more often than not, I'll say next. Yep. If, if there's some reason, I might, I might try to ask him a question through the door. That's fine. Who do you know? No, thank you. I have done that. And they'll say, no, thank you again. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I move on. I'm going to leave my card out here. I have a magnetic business card, by the way. These aren't a magnetic. <laughs> yeah, I stick them on their garage door. So when they're driving up, because if I stick it on the front door, the chances are they use the garage door. They're never going to see it. Well, I stick it on their mailbox. I stick them all over the place. I've learned not to stick them on cars. Oh, yeah? I did get cracked on one time. The guy's like, man, you stuck that thing on my car. It's going to mess up my paint job. Yes, but I'm going to sell you a house. <clears throat> all right, where are we? I gotta, I gotta buy some time here, guys. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the rest of these. The negative, positive close. Would you be offended if I asked if we could meet to go over this? Now the reason that is effective is because they're like, why would I be offended? This, this, I'm not a loser. I'm not a bad person. See, it's a little bit of reverse psychology. <clears throat> the take back close. I've really enjoyed visiting with you. To be honest, I'm not sure if I can be of help or not. But I would be honored if we could meet to find out. That's, that, that could be pretty effective with a lot of people. Yeah, I know. They get a little trickier, right? The tie-down clothes. Wouldn't it make sense for us to meet in the next day or two? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yeah. And you're nodding your head like this at the same time that you're saying it. And when you get really advanced, then, then uh, you, you will learn embedded commands. Uh, uh, an embedded command in this case would be, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it make sense for us to meet? Wouldn't it make sense for us to meet in the next couple days? So you pause. You say the word meet with a uh, down inflection. Meet, like a command. Meet me. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it make sense for you to meet me in the next couple of days? And you know what? People won't even notice that, that. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's all advanced stuff. You guys aren't ready for that. That's all black belt technology. <clears throat> Number 10, the alternative choice close. What works better for you? Meaning today, sometime this afternoon, or tomorrow morning. And I'll tell you what works best. Listen, I've got, I've got two opportunities. I can meet with you today at 2 o'clock or I can meet with you tomorrow at uh, 10.30 in the morning. Which works better for you? 10.30 in the morning. They say like within 72 hours, if you're scheduled, because after that, the client starts double seeking. Oh, yeah. And when you hit them up the fifth day and say, are you ready for our appointment on the sixth day? Uh, they're going to say, ah, you know what? Not today. It happens. It's like an instinct that within 72 hours, it ends up leaving their mind. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let me ask you a question. You guys that have done open houses, when do you call the people back? 
right away. Monday, Sunday is even better. I mean, if you have an open house on Saturday, it's, even, it's better if you call them on Sunday. Or you call them an hour after. Or text them. Or send them your app. Or all of the above. Because, I mean, you got to get, you got to strike while the iron is hot. You're going to fade from their memory in a very short amount of time. Ken, what is the most effective way to get their information? I know Dick said in the class on Wednesday, he, he texted in and puts it in his phone right away. But some people aren't open to that a lot of times. When we do open houses, they're with the group, they're the neighbors, they don't want their, you know, they don't want the information out there. What is the most effective way to get their information? Well, the most effective way that I have, uh, uh, for me has been to say, you know, for the clients, the, the client has asked me to get the contact information of each person that comes in. This is for safety reasons. You know, it's not like we're videotaping you or not, or maybe they, maybe they, maybe they are. Sometimes they do have video equipment. But for uh, safety purposes, we would like to get your contact information. It's not mandatory, but, and I would like to stay in touch with you. I, you know what, one of the best things you can do is just walk up to somebody when they first walk in the door when they first walk in the door, walk them and say, hi, my name is Ken Mitchell. How can I help you today? That's it. That's it. And then, then they're going to go, well, uh, you can't. I'm a realtor. Uh, dude, you didn't give me time to pull out my card. <laughs> Which has happened to me a few times. Like, oh, oh OK. Come on in. Yes. When I shadow kids in the doors uh -huh. at the open house, literally every, all she said was that she, knows she did her whole spiel in the beginning. And then she just says, I do ask that he sign in just so he knows this is the house. Every That's it. I did it. Everyone signed in, uh -huh. gave me full information. That's it. And I write that down. Everything. Can you repeat it? Write it down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even. I don't. I don't even ask them at the beginning. I just let them go through. Right. Focus on the connection and then get the information. So they give you real numbers. Because you just they, they can write some phony numbers in there. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And I'm, I've, I've gotten a lot of those, believe me. Yeah. Well, the notebook is the only thing that I've ever used. I've never, I'm not so advanced that I've used the iPad, but I'm telling you, that's going to get more and more popular, I would believe. Yeah, it's definitely cooler, man. I went into one one time in an agent, I forgot her name now, but she had a, a stand that she brought with her. And the uh, laptop was right at this level, and it had a program that was already set up, and it knew right away, as soon as you put it in, if it was a real email address or not. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Me, I'm old-fashioned. I get my books from a title company or whatever, and I set it out there. And, but that would be very effective. Oh, man, I know. And I know I've lost leads because of that. It, it is smart to, if you do have a handwritten list and people write in it, to kind of be there when they're writing in it and ask them to clarify something or make notes. That's another thing. Uh, writing notes next to somebody's name, because sometimes they'll share things with you. You're not going to remember it. You're, you're going to have 15 names on there, and you're not going to remember which was the one that was ready to sell right now. I can't remember. Right, and there are, there are books. That's a great idea. But there are also books that ask all these questions, and they fill in all the blanks. Are you, you pre-qualified? Are you ready to buy now? Do you have a home that you need to sell? The more information you can gather at that time, the better. Millennials? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I said millennials. Kidding.
That's an interesting technique. Yeah, or maybe some three by five cards. If you've got some printed up that already had those questions. Yes. That's a great idea. I mean, my gosh, you can get TVs like this so cheap these days, and you don't have to. You only have to buy one a year, right? But you you, you don't tell them when the drawing is. Right. Talking about easy, you know, maybe at the end of the listing, but if for a day you have, and you can do ten dollars a day from the people that come in your to your thing, I do it all That the sounds day. very, very effective. <laughs> or a gas card. My gosh, gas is like. Yeah, they're more willing to fill out their information completely if they if they think that they have a possibility of getting something. That's true. That's that is awesome, guys. All right, let's move on to the next one because I only have 50 minutes late, late left. And the next one is cultivate. Cultivate whether or not you have closed for an appointment or gotten a referral. Once the connection has been made, it can always be strengthened. It's an ongoing process. That is the truth. The relationships established here will continue to build as you keep in touch and perhaps eventually do business together. And you want the relationship to keep building. People who like you will do business with you and refer more business to you. I have had so many wonderful referrals from clients that I've done business with. It's a great source of, uh, of new clients and new friends. Some of the relationships I have with clients are just, you know, it's the juice. It really is. I mean, if you're a people person, great. If you're not, that's great too. You can do it for the money, and if that's what uh, floats your boat, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of money in this business. Say this out loud with me right now. We are in an ocean of money. We are in an ocean of money. There is no end to the amount of money in this world. If you believe money is scarce, that's how you will see it. You won't see the opportunities that are in front of you. Guys, when I started in the real estate business, it was 2010. Interest rates were high. The market had tanked. Everybody was unhappy. 60% of the transactions were foreclosures or short sales. People were leaving this business in droves. This office right behind us right here is where Christine Halagian had her office. As we were moving her stuff literally into the office, the other agent was moving her stuff out. And she said, are you a new agent? Yes, I'm a new agent. I'm moving into this office right now. She goes, oh, are you, do you have any experience in real estate? And, and she said, no, I have a degree in psychology. Christine has a master's degree in psychology. She goes, you're nuts. I'm leaving this business. And that's how we started in this business. And we did the same things you guys are doing right now. But we told ourselves over and over again, I am a money magnet. We worked on our mindset. I hit the ground running because I already had experience in, in sales, at least. And I'm definitely a people person. I love people. I want to come from contribution in everything that I do. And we hit the ground running. And we ignored what was going on in the market. Because here's the truth. It doesn't matter whether the market's good or bad. You can make more money in a bad market than you can make in a good market. It doesn't matter what the interest rates are. None, none of that matters. All that matters is that you keep doing these things that you're learning right now and do them consistently and, and believe that you're going to be a success. And the money will come because we're in an ocean of money. This world is filled with it. It's not scarce. It's not hard to find. There's tons of it. Let me tell you something. If you found a great deal right now, let's say an opportunity just came your way. Somebody wants to get rid of a house. They don't want it anymore. They're going into a, the Mayflower Gardens, and they got this house, and they, they, just, they just don't want to do all the work on it. They don't want to do this. They, don't want to do that. They, they just want to get rid of it. They don't want to have showings. And you said, look, I, I can get you $100,000 cash. People, there are people standing in line to give you that $100,000 cash. There's a dozen people in this building right now 
they would hand you $100,000 cash to buy that house if it was going to make them money. Correct. That's what I want you to understand. Change your perspective. There's an ocean of, of money. There's tons of opportunities. It, they're everywhere. They're in the Vons parking lot. I was in the Vons parking lot trying to get my bold 100 one time. And I was going up to people saying the spiel that you've already heard me say a thousand times. I gave this lady my card. And, and who do you know that might be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate I talked to today? And she goes, I'm from New Mexico. I'm just here to visit my, I, I'm from, from New Mexico. That's what she said. And I said, well, that's well, OK. Just keep my card or, or, or throw it away, whatever. And I walked away from her. She goes, I'm here because my mom and dad both have Alzheimer's. And I'm here to settle their estate. And I have three properties I have to sell. Can you help me with that? Yeah, I can help you with that. And I did. I sold all three of their properties. Not only that, I went door knocking in that same neighborhood and used the script that says, um, who, it, that says we, we know statistically that one, one house sells. In, in the next few weeks, a couple more come on the market. It's more eloquent than that. But that's basically what I said. And this guy hemmed and hawed, and I just let it sit there. Trust me, guys, in communication, Silence, pauses are so important. You want to be a good communicator? Use that effectively. So I said, we know that houses, a couple houses come on the market right after one closes. Well, when do you plan on moving? I said that to a guy. The guy just waited. And it was like this longest pregnant pause in the world. <laughs> And I just so wanted to say something and break the silence, but I did it. And I'm so glad I didn't, because finally what he said is, well, I want to sell. My wife and I want to leave the Antelope Valley. We don't like it up here. We wanted to move a long time. Uh, the reason he hemmed and hawed is because his cousin was a realtor. But his cousin was on an extended vacation in Singapore. And he got tired of waiting. And I was the right guy at the right place at the right time. And I double-ended that house for cash. So that's one, two. That was like six sides and about a million and a half dollars worth of business from a person who was living in New Mexico that was getting out of her pickup truck in the Vaughn's parking lot. It's everywhere. Change your mindset. <laughs> I'm not telling you, man, that's my bonds. Find your own bonds. <laughs> All right. Page 21, your sphere of influence. Oh my gosh, I, I just can't uh, stress this one enough. Sphere of influence, all the people you know, I'm sorry, all the people who know you, trust you, and may do business with you is your sphere of influence. Your barber. Somebody, uh, I'll say barber, somebody say somebody else that you run into that might know you. N not even know you, they just, they're just familiar with you. They don't know your name, but they're familiar with you. They've seen you. They've done business with you. Think of somebody. Pharmacy. Your pharmacist. By the way, my pharmacist is retiring in a couple of weeks and wants to start doing real estate investments with me. True story. Okay. I'm not going to tell you my pharmacist either. <laughs> Say another one. All right, give me another example, real quick. Just think of somebody. Uh, anybody. Friend from high school. Your friend from high school. How many friends do you have from high school? A lot. And how many of your friends have friends? Uh, write this down. Uh, write this down. Not that. Don't write that down, whatever that was. Who do you know that I should know? Who do you know that I should know? That's going to net you a lot of business by asking that question friend who used to live here, you went to high school with, whatever, lives out of the area. They come back into town. They call you. They want to get together for lunch. Ask them, who do you know that I should know that might want to buy or sell a house? I'm a real estate agent now. That question will net you a lot of money. Your sphere of influence is where all of your first business is going to come from. Karen was part of my sphere of influence. My next buyer was from my sphere of influence. It goes on and on. 
And over the years, that's, that's your most important resource right there is your sphere of influence. Think of the people closest to you as the inner circle of your sphere of influence. They are your biggest champions. They already know, trust, and respect you. Therefore, they are likely to be willing to help you because after all, people like to do business with those they know, trust, and respect. <clears throat> Your inner circle is the group of people you'll look to most often and reward most often for help and support in referring business your way. In fact, the majority of your business during your first year in real estate will most likely originate from your inner circle. It's only natural that your sphere in the, is in the place where you'll begin to find leads. It could be, I, I was literally at, um, what's that place over by Vaughn's, they cut hair? Supercuts. I'm in supercuts. Girls cutting my hair. I say, hey, I'm a realtor. Who do you know that might be looking to buy solar investor real estate? She's literally cutting my hair at that moment. And she goes, oh, well, me and my husband are getting a divorce, and we have to sell our house. It was just that easy. My wife was getting a mani-pedi recently, and I was just sitting in the chair next to her to keep her company. I mean, I don't get that. Sure. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, with my shoes on. And across the aisle in one of the other chairs was a former Keller Williams agent. I won't mention her name because she betrayed us. Went with EXP, but hey, how's it going? We chatted up and we're talking real estate across the aisle. Everyone's listening. And we're, we're having laughs and we're sharing stories and we're talking a little bit intentionally about the market, not a whole lot. This lady comes up to me gives me a piece of paper, and she says, I need to sell my house. I live right here in Rancho Vista. Would you give me a call? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Probably because I had my shoes on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but may maybe she resonates more with men. But yeah, that, that was a source of business right there. It's just that easy. Yes? Oh. I was in the ER last night until like 1 a.m. Mm. So we're in the hallway, and then um, I'm not really close with his side of the family. So he has a son who just inherited like all this like raw land in Acton, and then another parcel in Acton with an improvement on it, et cetera, et cetera. So they don't want to necessarily like absorb those taxes when they transfer it and they get reassessed at the current value. So I just said, hey, I'm running cards out. So that's what I was doing when I was waiting there for 10 hours. And I was like, I'm writing cards out. Give me your address. Here's your card, and I'm going to give you my card. And then we were sitting there in the aisle just chatting about land values, reassessments, because like, that's my background. In right. And, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just like, okay, well, we can definitely work on that, like changing title, this and that. And I was like, I can ask people in my office, you know, it's no problem. And so I was talking kind of loudly because it's quiet, you know. <coughs> And there was like a bunch of people just kind of around, so I thought this is a good opportunity lurking in the hallways of the ER. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Let's give her a round of applause. Because that's what we want to be about all the time, everywhere you go. What's your name? Christine Aguilar. Christine. She's going to be a heavy hitter, folks. Heavy hitter. We already know, yeah. Anyway, um, I was in. Um, Oh, what's the name of that place? Shoot. It's, it's over by Buffalo Wild Wings, and it's for kids. It's a little village. Imagine, imagine City, Imagination City. I'm in Imagination City for my first time ever, and I'm dressed for work. I, I didn't have a suit on, but I had a tie and everything. And I'm with my, because my daughter asked me to watch my grandkids. So I'm in there, and the two guys are having a great time. My gosh. I gave out so many business cards. I got so many connections from people, including the lady that runs the place. And um, that's going to lead to some business. Anywhere, everywhere. There's opportunities. People need help. They need you. You're important to them. Just have that in the forefront of your mind at all times. It doesn't mean you have to have sales breath. You don't. You just want to help people. Yeah, you don't want to have sales breath. Hey, you're going to sell a house? You're going to buy a house soon? You want to buy a house for me? I really need a commission. That's sales breath. All right, page 22. 
Your turn, Spirit of Influence. Uh, let's see, write down as many names as you can for each category, even if you only know someone's first or last name, write it down. You guys have that page in your book, right? Yes. And it's blank. Mine has a bunch of stuff written on it. Okay, we're going to, for the next 10 minutes, and, and I am going to take the time, even if I don't finish this lesson, which I might not, even if I don't finish this lesson, this next thing that you're about to do, yeah, this exercise, is going to be one of the most important things you can do. And you need to add these people to your database, too, by the way. You need to have a category in your database that says SOI, or Sphere of Influence, because that's where your business is going to come from at first. So for the next 10 minutes, I want you to fill out this form on page 22 and start writing names. Now, if you don't know somebody's name, guy that cuts my hair. Postman, garbage man, maybe the guy that delivers your garbage, maybe you've talked to him one or two times, but they know you. Next door neighbor, both of my neighbors sold their houses. I didn't get the business, unfortunately, because one worked for Lockheed or some company like that, and they, they uh, Keller Williams does not have a contract with their mover, their company that handles all that. Because they only pay 1% anyway, which sucks. So I didn't get to sell the house. But I mean, my next door neighbors sold their houses. So um, then the other one was owned by a realtor. So he sold his own house. <clears throat> but your neighbors, your past coworkers, start filling this out, guys. Write, it, write it some names down. Yes? I was told that you can't sell your own home. Here's what happens if you sell your own home. Yeah. You're right. You, you have, with every transaction, the reason that for you to get a real estate license, you have to name a brokerage to be under is because that brokerage carries E&O insurance, errors and omissions. You make a mistake out of form, somebody gets sued, there's insurance for that. And if you do your own transaction for your own home, you don't have any coverage. You're not covered for E&O insurance anymore. Yeah, you can still do the transaction. Legally, you're a real estate agent. You can close the transaction. But you won't be covered by E&O insurance. And if something goes wrong, it's going to be your, your, your butt on the line. So it's better to, uh, you, some people will ask our, uh, our bro broker of record, Scott, to do the transaction for them. Even though they handle all the paperwork and everything, they, he doesn't have to do anything. Just digitally sign stuff. You didn't hear that from me. <laughs> I was just going to interject. I just did. I sold a home. But Keller Williams does also have a program like Scott or somebody. There's another agent from within. And then um, there's a, they can adjust um, your, your commissions. That person who sells it for you. And there's a way you make actually the difference, like in a Yeah, your fellow realtors can sometimes be a source of business for you, too. Uh, Christine Halajian bought several homes, and I was her agent, and we just did a deal on the commission. Uh, but I didn't do it for nothing. She still paid me, and it was a source of revenue. So yeah, and we we're, were covered with our E&O insurance. So yeah, it's a, it's. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, she's still an agent. She's just not as active as she once was. Man, she is. Sure, she was. She is. She's just a dynamo in another direction now. Talk about somebody who changed the world, helped change the world through the art of communication. Christine is uh, of Armenian descent. She literally moved here when she was 19 from Armenia, which has been in a regime for 35 years. And partly due to her blogging online, uh, she literally changed the face of the government of the country of Armenia. She was part of a movement that, where Armenians came out of their homes, laid down in the streets, 
and paralyzed the entire country so that one man could walk across that country to meet the president. And he was, a, he was a member of their parliament, that he was popular among the people, and people were sick of the regime that was oppressing them. And it was one, it was, the regime was one family for 35 years that ran the country and just took everything. And that guy met, walked all the way across the country, it took him a week, and met with the president. It was all, all on the internet, all over the world, there was so much pressure on Armenia that the president resigned the next day. So you can make a difference. Yes. And Christine is a Toastmaster. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the <laughs> Christ message here is that you need to be Toastmaster. Yeah, that's the, that's the underlying yes, message. Yes, I know. That's, that's like you can underthrow a regime of Toastmasters. But you, you guys, you really, you, you have so much influence and you have so much power. And you have so much potential to change people's lives, and mostly to change your own life. You can be whatever you want to be. I know you've heard that before, but you can have tons of money and still have a great quality of life through the real estate industry. And the, the knowledge that you're going to bring is going to come from the experience that you have, and you are going to have so many stories to tell. You are going to be able to change people's lives. You. I don't care who you are. I don't care whether you're tall or short, or a millennial, uh, or old like me, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, real estate agents come in all shapes and sizes, and there are people that you think, that guy could be a rock star. And, and, but somebody else who's very, very humble, very, very uh, an, an introvert, it doesn't matter. People can make it in this industry without a college education. You just got to do what I'm telling you to do. Fill out that form that I just asked you to fill out with your sphere of influence. That's number one. You are going to get more business from your sphere of influence. It could be the guy at the auto parts store where you buy your auto parts. You don't even know his name. He doesn't know yours. But guess what? He's seen you before. You write it down. Guy at auto parts store. You struck up conversations. Maybe you never talked about real estate. Well, next time you go in there, you will. Oh, by the way, I've got my real estate license. If you ever need my services, please give me a call. I talked to someone uh, like for years, and I just thought that Chevron and all getting gas. And every time I see him, I'm like, friend, my friend, you know? And we didn't even know each other's names. And I just told him, like, oh, he's like, where have you been? You know, I was like, I, was, I just got into real estate. And he was like, I was thinking about doing real estate. So I gave Jared's number and said, hopefully, if he follows through, I can put him like down the line one day. Hey, I, I, I had a guy. That's awesome. I had a guy in Toastmasters Club call me one time, and uh, I helped him sell a house and helped him buy a house. He was in my Toastmasters Club. He's still in my database. We're still hopefully doing de deals together. <laughs> when, well, when he gets ready to sell his house, I'm staying in touch with him. My car was on the fritz over the holiday for too long, and so I was Ubering all over town to go here and everywhere uh -huh. else. And so every Uber driver that I was in the car with, I was hitting them up. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Brendan's calling Uber now. I'm about to get Uber home now. I'm going to call the CEO. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, all right, time blocking is so important. That's on page 23. Prospect efficiently and consistently with three processes in your three hours of daily lead generation. The formula for this time blocking discipline is called the 3-3 and stands for three things done in three hours. As a new agent, you can and should spend more than three hours doing this. Number one, prepare. How do you prepare? You prep your call list. My advice is prep your call list the day before. I'm hoping you were prepping a call list just a few minutes ago when we took 10 minutes to write down names from your sphere of influence. Uh, I want you to keep that as an open list. Just keep adding to it and adding to it. I mean, people, cousins, your cousins. And it doesn't matter if they're in another part of the country either, by the way. Let them know you're in real estate. And guess what? We have referrals all over the United States yeah. through the Kelly Act. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Gloria. I'm from Texas. I used to live there for seven years, so I know a ton of people. Dallas, Austin, pretty much the whole state, everybody in Texas pretty much knows everybody. There you go. Um, so I know this works out better, et cetera, et cetera. 
Yeah. See there? <laughs> My cousin is a real estate agent in Houston. Yeah. I'm going to be. Houston. I'll take Dallas. Deal. <laughs> I've been to Dallas. I didn't like it much. Anyway, you were saying? No, no, no. Since you said Middle East, I was like, oh. Also, the, the, yeah, the world. Yeah. Keller Williams Realty is an international organization. Yeah. All right, so the three things are prepare, take action, and maintain. Prepare, prep your call list. I recommend you prepare your call list the day in advance. Uh, number two, say to your affirmations, focus on your big why. Your big why will drive you. Be hungry, hungry. And you know what? You guys need to start coming to the award ceremonies, even if you know you're not going to get an award. You need to come because you need to see people that are just, they started out just like you. Yes? I was going to say about cold calling. The uh, reason I stepped out is because I got a, I got a phone call from a uh, possible listing. Um, a list of numbers that I got from, from Title, and you know how when you get those you know, numbers, right? There you go. That is exciting. Right on. And what's the commission from that? Let's let's flesh this out just a little bit more. Let's say it's five hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and you get full pop, and and oops, what did I even do that? What is it? Seventeen thousand dollars. What would you do with seventeen thousand dollars? And what if you? And after you get on a roll, you're going to be doing that two or three times a month. Uh, what was the highest commission I heard in here uh, yesterday? I'm trying to remember. Well, one of the agents that was up here, their commission for one month was $87,000. That's the whole month or one day? That wasn't a flip. No, that was their commissions for one month. Yeah, oh, of course, of course. Who knows how much, you know, how long it took to get to that, but it doesn't matter. They're on a roll. I did one transaction last year. Now, mind you, it was a flip. And um, I made $94,000 on one transaction. So what is the world? An ocean of money. That's right. <laughs> Opportunity is everywhere. OK, so then, then the second thing is to prospect and update your database. Even small details in your database can make a big difference. This person likes deep sea fishing. Next time you call them, oh, dude, did you check out what's happening on the Dana Point? Yeah, the Albies are biting. Woohoo! Man, people, when they're fishermen, they're like sick. Uh, I, I don't get me going on fishing. I love deep sea fishing so much, I can talk about it for hours. And uh, yeah, let's not. <clears throat> And then maintain, track your results. The agents, you will find out that the top agents in this, uh, in this organization, they know their numbers. They asked Thomas Palaskis. The, they revealed that when they were here t the other night. Now, one interesting thing, one of the, Tiffany, Tiffany was one of the guest speakers here. You know what she said that she wished she had done in, in her first year more? Talk to her sphere of influence. About that. You know, right? So what? What is that? That's mindset, right? So she was kind of nervous about calling people and asking for business because they're your friends, and it's like, oh man, that's like so uncool. Those are the people that love you the most. They want you to succeed. Really, your mindset should be that everybody wants you to succeed. I want you to succeed. I came here bearing gifts and sharing with you because I want you to succeed. I love hearing about people that are successful. Sam Raffae is one of the greatest men I've ever met in my life. 
he will not hesitate to stop what he's doing to sit and talk to you about how to become a more successful pe person. Scott Cooper just walked by the room. He's looking in here. Scott Cooper would not hesitate to stop what he's doing. As soon as he's done with a phone call, he's going to call you back. You know why? Because he cares about you as a person. You. All of you. He wants you to be successful. Your clients want you to be successful. And nobody wants you to be more successful than your sphere of influence. So call them. Say, hey, guess what? I got my license. I'm in the business. Or, hey, I've already, guess what? I, I'm actually making it. I closed four transactions already, and I got three more in the pipeline. Who do you know that might be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? And who do you know that I should know? Yeah. That's it. You go. Voila. Guys, there's <laughs> Toastmasters. <laughs> well, he hasn't been to Toastmasters <laughs> yet. Imagine you are a Toastmaster. Imagine how much you can lose your business. All right, now let's see. We've got to watch a video. I mean, we get to watch a video. All right, who knows what I'm doing wrong? Here we go. Okay. So we were able to sort of survive by boxing and by the sort of like. Is that really how it begins? Three hours a day. It's just more time effective. Yeah. If you're cheap like we are, you don't want to spend a ton of money on the web or on print. Telephone line, you pay a monthly bill and you can call all you want. Once you come in here and say we'll call here. We've got a map where we've broken the entire city into zones. We like the target areas where we have higher it's been scrubbed the view on call list and it still represents over a quarter million phone numbers. So all of our guests have two monitors and we have mojo in the middle. We have our scripts on the right. And then we'll have to do some research on the heads they're calling for, stuff like that. Cold calling is like adding gas to your car or something. It's just, it pumps your business up. You know, so I like this video. The first year I like it. Right? And then this year, we got to do a million one. So, yeah. this is Sean Paul from the real estate drivers. You know what I'm so sorry about? You pay for it. No you have to treat cold calling as though it's an appointment. If you don't prioritize it, things will always find their way in and block you from being able to do it. It's the most important thing to do for your business. Absolutely. I love that.
I love that. That's our video for the day, and I really like it. I think it's effective. Um, let me go back to my thing. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you're either added to my future or to my past, one or the other. It, okay. Is that cool now? I could do that. Okay. <clears throat> We're in the final laps here, folks. Yep. Page 24. Part of preparing. Solid preparation is the foundation of any successful prospecting. Plan to spend approximately 30 minutes getting ready. Number one, prep call list. Generate a list of names, phone numbers, and pertinent information. What are some sources of uh, numbers? Where can you get your phone numbers? Title. Title. Yeah, because title will give you numbers of people in specific geographic areas, or they can give you phone numbers of people who haven't made a payment in three or four, five, six months. People are being foreclosed on. Uh, they're just not cutting it. Uh, you, there's also, what about FISBOs, for sale by owners, and, and people who have their expireds. Do you, if you go through the MLS and spend any time in there at all, you will find hundreds and hundreds of listings with the worst photographs you've ever seen in your life. Or they're tiny, or they're made with a cell phone, and there's, uh, they're, just, they're just a mess. It is, uh, it is it's sad, really. It is sad, it's very disappointing. It's no wonder people think of us as used car salesmen, and their opinion of us sometimes is not very high because of the photographs. But that's a reason oftentimes that a listing expires. No other reason than that, it's just crappy photos, or one photo, or two photos. You can be their savior. You can call that person and get that business. A lot of times agents also include the phone number of the client in the listing. And so you take advantage of that. Yes? Sometimes we just call the titles that expire today. Yep. Why? And uh, people that the listing canceled last year, it was canceled, never sold. And they decided not to sell it at the moment, but they are really in the Oh my gosh. So who did, so nobody called them for a year? No. Yeah. Or maybe they called them. See, sometimes what happens is somebody has a bad experience with an agent who sits on their butt, who never has an open house, who uses their cell phone for photography. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they suck as a photographer with their cell phone or without, uh, they, they don't make the effort. They, they don't have a good description. They have bad information. Uh, my, my advice early on is as soon as you can, join the Southland Regional Association of Realtors. It's only $400 more a year. Here in the Antelope Valley, we have, what, 2,000 agents, mm -hmm. if that. Down there, it's like 30,000 agents. That's a lot more exposure for your listings. And to tell you the truth, this is going to hurt, so guard your hearts. People down below sell more houses than all of us up here combined. How is that possible? Because half of the time, when I do a transaction with an agent down there, I end up doing his job for him. He doesn't want to come out when the inspector comes. He doesn't want to come out to let somebody in for whatever. I have to do their job for them. And their, their, their client even saw the house at my open house. Oh, it's, yeah, probably at least that. It's much, much, much bigger. But it also includes, you know, this, the, the Antelope Valley. And so they buy and sell. They do more business in this valley than all the real estate agents combined. So why not take advantage of that firepower? Southland Regional Association of Realtors. S-R-A-R. -R. If you're already a member of GAVAR, it's a couple hundred dollars more to belong to S-R-A-R. -R. Now, when you go on a listing appointment, you use that kind of language. You say, look, most of the agents in this valley only belong to GAVAR. Great. That's Greater Antelope Valley Association of Realtors. I belong, because of my volume of business, I can afford to also belong, you know, $250 more a year, or 400 whatever it is, 
t to Southland Regional Association of Realtors. They only have exposure to 2,000 realtors. I have exposure to, exposure to 32,000 realtors. Who's going to sell your house first? I am. Absolutely true. Uh, I've been a member of SRAR since my second year in business because I realized what an advantage it was. So, for example, we got myself a client and we liked the house that was only in SRAR. It was right behind Big Five, built in 1989, and it had a solar panel paid off. Wow. Two bathrooms and only 239. But that was on SRAR, and he sent it to me, and nobody else was looking at it because they don't have access to most things. Right. So, so we ended up getting the house number 239, paid off solar panels, higher roof, like it's a newer build, nice inside, and mm -hmm. paid off solar panels too. That's like a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah, I mean the house is near. We're selling for uh, 305, 299. Mm -hmm. So it was a thing where I would have jumped on it, but my finances weren't in different areas at the moment. But so I gave it to my client, but it was just a big deal that. Next time you find a deal like that, call me. <laughs> okay. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Seriously. All right, solid preparation foundation of any successful prospecting. Plan to spend at least 30 minutes getting ready. Prep calls. Generate a list of names, phone numbers, and pertinent information. Re ask for referrals. Your sphere of influence. For sale by owners. Leads from signs, sign calls, or websites. <clears throat> I tell people, if, uh, you know, I ask them, can we put a sign in your front yard? If they hem and haw about it, I say, look, 85%, I have no idea if that's true, but 85 or 90% of all <laughs> houses sold have a sign in front of them. Is that true? That's absolutely true. Does that mean the signs sold the house? Not necessarily, but they had a sign in front of it. So the truth, and, but that's, that's a great source of advertisement for you. If you don't have any signs, get some signs made. I got a guy. You know, everybody has a guy that makes signs or a guy that puts them in the ground. It's very inexpensive to get them for the guy that puts them in the ground. It's well worth it. You don't want to do it yourself. But get some signs. Get your signs out there. Put your signs on vacant lots if you can. You could, there's a website you can go on and find out if it's like government land. You can put a sign on it. If it's somebody's private property, if it's somebody's listing, I did that one time. Don't do that. <laughs> Guy calls me and says, oh, how come your sign's on my, uh, my, my client's property? I says, you have a sign on that property? Oh, yeah, I have a sign on that property. But his sign was all blown apart. It was all oh. destroyed. So I, <laughs> it was active listing. It was still active. I had to take my sign down. So be careful about that. But you do want to get your name out there, your face out there, your information. Number two, rehearse scripts. Scripts are going to give you the confidence to get on the phone to make those calls or the confidence while you're standing in line at Costco waiting for a hot dog to turn around and ask the guy behind you, who do you know that might be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Take action. It's prospecting time. Approximately two hours of the 3-3 is spent making connections, building relationships, and asking for business. Get out your database or call, call list and start calling. We're not going to do that right now, but you're going to do that. <laughs> and then maintain approximately 30 minutes of your daily 3-3 is time spent wrapping up your lead generation with methodical follow-up. Methodical, what does the word methodical mean? Step-by-step. Structured. Structured, organized, step-by-step, step, not scribbled notes on a bunch of notepads or yellow, yellow pads. No, it's got to be in your database, man. It's got to be organized. And your database needs to be organized according to METs, not METs, and, and people from your sphere of influence. I want you to tell me, tell yourself right now that today, before tomorrow, you're going to make a category in your database that's called SOI, Sphere of Influence. And you're going to start filling that in. 
take your phone. Take everybody out. Just spend an hour going through your all the list of contacts in your phone, adding them to your database, and start making those phone calls. That is your number one source of business at first. All right. We're almost done. Just skip the next video. The next video is finding more leads, which is kind of the heart of this whole thing. But I don't have time to go through it right now. <clears throat> Door knocking. Um, I talked to somebody one time, one of the doors I knocked on, a friend of mine told me that the same realtor had been knocking on their door, this is going to blow your mind, for 18 years. 18 years. And they said to me, I, I, you know, I'm loyal to that person. That person spent 18 years of their life knocking on my door. And I'm going to go with them. I says, God bless you. I think you should. <laughs> that is perseverance. Did you leave the neighborhood? Did I leave the neighborhood? No, I didn't leave the neighborhood. But I, I didn't you know, pursue that person. I, I probably should have, huh? <laughs> no, because that guy also could have been lying. Who knows? People will tell you anything. So um, I did give them my card. I didn't take their information. And I. I Gave respect where respect was due. So, um, yeah, door knocking used to be a lot more fun. The ring doorbell has kind of kicked things in the head a little bit. Maybe, maybe I just need to get used to it. I mean, I have a ring doorbell, and I use it to screen people all the time. Uh, when I go, I take my card out and I put it right up against that eye, you know, and I say, "Hey, my name's Ken Mitchell. I'm with Keller Williams," and but the ring doorbell and those kinds of devices really make it difficult for door knocking. But don't be intimidated necessarily by no soliciting signs. Yes. Right. Yeah, why not? Uh, look, I, like I said, I have a ring doorbell. Well, what do I see most of the time? Somebody walks up, ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> yeah, am I going to call that person? I mean, I don't have their information. Even if they left their car, they left the flyer, even if I needed their business. Is, does that inspire me? No. But if somebody came up and said, hey, I'm with Keller Williams Realty. If you ever need real estate services, please give me a call. I'm going to stick my card on your, on your garage door <laughs> or whatever. You know, something on your car, on your garage door, stick it to your door. It'll be right here. If you ever need a realtor, stick this on your refrigerator. You'll never have to look for a realtor again. Thank you very much. And leave. I mean, obviously, you're going to ring the doorbell, but there, chances are they're not going to say anything. Right. Well, I'm on that network. I do share my information. I'm a vendor. I'm a, I'm a vendor for. There's also this next door uh, uh, app. Yeah, I'm on that. Everything you can do. So expireds are a great source. Open houses, really great source of business, especially when you're new. Uh, agent referrals, social media. That's another thing, agent referrals, and that's probably where I'm just about going to have to end. Uh, as you go about your business as a realtor, be a nice person. I have had agents that were so horrible to work with, I will never show one of their listings for as long as I live. I, I'll give up a client. You know, is it, i got to have that house. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I'm wrong in that. I don't know. You know, I haven't. I probably should, because now this this one agent I almost got into a fist fight with. Well. I called him out. He he. Out, yeah. and, you know, here's what happened. Honestly, I, I was a brand new agent. I was a brand new agent, 
and he was with Remax, and I'm not going to say who he was. And uh, I, I said to him early on, I shook his hand, I says, man, I really appreciate the opportunity to do business with you. Thanks for taking my bid. I says, with your experience, I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm new at this. I'm sure I could learn a lot. But what I did not understand is the jealousy between a lot of seasoned agents and the success, the meteoric success of Keller Williams Realty. Ten years ago, we didn't exist. Those places, some of those companies have been here 30, 40, 50 years. And we have seven, we have 14% of the market share in this valley. Now, let me put that in perspective. Our next nearest competitor is Caldwell Bankers. They have 7%. And the next nearest competitor after that is Remax. They have 6%. So when I tell clients, I'm with Keller Williams Realty, we're the biggest agency in the Antelope Valley. We sell more houses, we do more real estate than our two next competitors combined. That's the truth. We do. So we did that in 10 years. There are 366 agents out of this office right now. Coldwell Bankers has 70, and Remax has 80. We are the biggest force in this valley. So when some rookie comes up to some guy that's been selling real estate for 15 years and says, I want to be your buddy, it's like, yeah, right. So they, they, and they think that, they think this is like a grist mill, that we just, that we pump out agents left and right. And, and I've actually had agents tell me, don't drink the Kool-Aid at Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. They're talking about our culture. They're talking about the fact that we put God first, family second, and business third. That's to them like a cult, that kind of, yeah. No, I'm serious. I actually posted a picture on my social media. I think they've seen it too. When you Google what's the best company to work for in the real estate industry, all of it, every website says Keller Williams. By far, by far. As a matter of fact, Keller Williams has certain years, I'm not going to say every year, but certain years has been listed as the number one most desirable place to work out of any industry and also has the highest rating of education of any industry. That's beating out NASA. That's beating out the auto industry. That's beating out education facilities. At Keller Williams is, you guys are, you guys have such an opportunity here. If you could just understand it. Lowest, some of the lowest interest rates in history. Anybody want to guess what the average interest rate is in the United States throughout history? From the beginning in the United States till now, Denver? what is the average interest rate? Nine. Close, it's eight and a half percent. And what is our interest rate right now? Three, three, three and a half, three, 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 three. Even if you're buying a second home, it's like four percent, right? When I bought my first house, you know what interest rates were? Thirteen percent. And I was happy to get it. There's a whole story about that. I'm not going to go into it. But it was a miracle when I bought my house. I promise you, it was the big man. It wasn't me. It was a miracle. Anyway, any more questions before we close? I want you guys to go out there and kill it. The world is an ocean of what? Money. Money. And opportunities are where? Everywhere. Everywhere. That's right. Go out there and crush it. You guys are loved. Make it happen. Yeah, go enjoy. Yeah, if you are nervous around people and you think.